By dictionary definition, a beard is described as the hairs which grow on the lower parts of a man's face. However, the beard has always been seen as so much more than just the hairs on your chinny chin chin. Instead, the beard and facial hair in general are symbols of many things, both good and sadly bad, throughout history. In this documentary, I, Joe Skinner, will be taking part in the social events known as December and Manuary, along with my good friends Jeff White and Philip Peskett. December is an event where we will be growing a beard from November 30th to December 31st, and alongside taking part in this challenge, I am going to be looking into the fuzzy history of beards, pun intended, to find out for myself why such facial hair is so widely symbolic of things such as strength, leadership and manliness. Also, to help myself, Jeff and Phil out, I am going to be researching the many different styles of beards out there, so that when we enter the month of January, we can shape and style our own beards with accurate reference to what we desire. Now you're probably wondering what is December and what is manuary, so here is our lovely friend Vince the Stereotypical Pirate to help us understand what these things are. Over to you Vince. Thanks Joe, but that's Captain Vince to you, and don't you ever forget that. Anywho, that's right boys and girls, I be Captain Vince the Stereotypical Pirate, who in no way, shape or form is anything like or linked to the handsome chap that is Jeff White. The idea from Movember was sparked into life in 2003 and originates from Australia. Apparently, over a few beers in Melbourne, the event came about as a way to bring the moustache back to its rightful place in society, above the top lip, and to be something for men's health. This event was about raising awareness for men's health, with the moustache being a symbol for this cause, and although no money was raised in the first year, this year, after the creators took inspiration from women taking part in breast cancer awareness event, and the campaign was born. In 2004, over 432 men took part and joined the movement of that year, which raised $55,000 for charities, preventing the number one cancer affecting men, prostate cancer, Yar. This combined donation was the largest donation they had ever received and since then Movember has carried on raising awareness and money for prostate cancer and men's health in general on a large scale. So large in fact that now across the world men and maybe even women suffering from prostatism are not just wearing moustaches proud in aid of this noble cause but also beards which is where we introduce you to Decembeard, the younger brother of Movember. The name Movember derives from Mo, slang for a moustache, and November. Combined together and following on in the same vein as Movember, December takes the word beard and December and creates the wonderful event which Joe Skinner, Philip Peskett, and myself, uh, I, I, I mean, I mean Jeff White, will be taking part in. Shiver me timbers! The rules for both charity challenges are the same and very easy to follow. So here are the rules Jeff, Joe and Phil will be following. And also, here they are for the viewer, should they ever want to have a go. Number one, on December or the night before, one must shave so that they begin December clean shaven and smoother than a baby's bum. Two, securely lock away your razor, shaving paraphernalia, as you cannot shave again until January the 1st or Manuary, as some call it for this is when you can style whatever face fur you have. Number three, take a photo of yourself before, when you're clean shaven, and after your beard is grown, and finally when it has been styled. Joe, Phil and Jeff, however, will be taking a photo every day, so that at the end of this documentary, you will be able to see this wonderful transformation up close and personal. Number four, enjoy it. You never know, you might love having a beard and beat Hans Langriff's length for the longest. Good luck though, because his beard was roughly 5.3 meters, which is over 17.5 foot. Twist me barnacles, that's a one mighty fine beard. Well, there you go. You're now up to date with all things December, November and Manuary. So now it's time to get on with this challenge. So it's back to Joe to begin the wonderful challenge that is December, along with his friends Phil and Jeff. The, the latter of whom I again stress I'm of no relation. Although, I wouldn't turn down the offer to, to meet such a fine seaman. Back to you, Joe! Arrgh! Thanks, Vince. You do sound strangely familiar, though, I must admit. Now let's find out using that conveniently placed advent calendar of your face, Vince, what the Peskett family like in facial hair. <laughs> right, so, this is Eden on the right, Gret on the left, and Jensen and Phil. Um, Gret and Eden, what do you like in facial hair on us? Oh, it oh. covers Phil's bad chin. It's yeah, bad. yeah. It's got a weak chin, it covers it. <laughs> like Joe has a double chin. Weak chin. Why? That's Thanks why I think they call them chins. <laughs> yeah, I like beards now. I like beards too. What sort of style are you after, though? Uh, not that much. 
Do you think that's too much on Dad? Look, no, I think Dad. maybe a bit less on the neck. <laughs> yeah. Mm. But I think Joe's got a nice mouth. Yeah, but I normally shape it once it's... Yeah, that's oh, what we're looking for. In shape. January. Yeah, shape. But we do like facial yeah. hair. We don't like the right. continuation of chest hair up to beard. <laughs> oh, lovely, no. lovely. Do you like the tash as well, or...? <laughs> Mags can... Yeah. Oh. If he's going to have the beard, it's got to be the whole lot, yeah. Yeah. What about you? Um, sometimes. I like to change it. I shave it. <laughs> Having spoken to my girlfriend and Phil's girlfriend, I wonder what beards have meant to others throughout history. So let's go now to look at what beards have meant through history. Beginning with Neolithic man, the beard was grown in the hope that it would help the wearer blend into the brush while hunting triceratops. And as you can see on the right, it works very well. The highest ranking ancient Egyptians, however, were the ones who turned the beard into a fashion statement more than a handy tool for hunting. This hair which grew on their chins was often dyed or hennaed reddish brown and sometimes plaited with interwoven golden thread. Sometimes a metal false beard or postiche, which was a sign of sovereignty, was worn by kings, queens and sometimes cows. This was held in place by a ribbon tied over the head and attached to a gold chin strap, a fashion existing from about 3000 to 1580 BC. It was in ancient India where the beard was allowed to grow very long that it became a symbol of dignity and wisdom. It was the nations in the east generally which treated their beards with great care and the punishment for things such as adultery was to have the beard of the offending parties publicly cut off. However, they had such a sacred regard for the preservation of their beards that a man might pledge it for a payment of a debt. The ancient Greeks regarded the beard as a badge or sign of virility and for things such as fathering kids, leadership and strength. The beard was only shaven as a sign of mourning, or the Spartans punished cows by shaving off a portion of their beards. A smooth face was regarded as a sign of effeminacy, however, Greek beards were also frequently curled with tongues. In ancient Rome, shaving seems to have not been known during their early history, and in fact it was P. Tinicus who was the first barber to arrive in Rome. Scipio Africanus, I'm sorry if I've got the name wrong, was apparently the first Roman to have been shaved. After Scipio, shaving seems to have caught on very quickly and soon almost all Roman men were clean shaven. This clean shavenness was a sign of being Roman and not Greek. For pre-pubescent boys, the first occasion of shaving was regarded as the beginning of manhood and the day in which this took place was celebrated as a festival. In fact, some boys oiled their chins in the hopes of forcing premature growth of a beard, but sadly this would probably end up in spots and they didn't have clearisol then. The hair cut off on such occasions was consecrated to a god. For example, Nero put his into a golden box set with pearls and dedicated it to Jupiter Capitolinus. Unlike the Greeks, the Romans let their hair grow in mourning, and in fact Augustus had a huge beard when Julius Caesar died. However though, men from the countryside usually had stubble when they came to market, so it's not all Romans who were clean shaven. Among the Celts of Scotland and Ireland, men typically let their facial hair grow into a full circle of beard and it was often seen as dishonourable for a Gaelic man to have no facial hair. In fact, when Otto the Great said anything serious, he swore by his beard which covered his breast. The seriousness which surrounds the beard during these times also carried on into the Middle Ages, where holding someone else's beard was a serious offence that had to be righted in a duel. 